podcast, we're going to review some of the tools available for interpolation with Python. Now, interpolation is when you take data and draw a curve between those data points. This is to be contrasted with curve fitting, in which the data is often noisy and needs to be smoothed. While you can use some of the tools we're going to talk about in this screencast to accomplish curve fitting, the intended uh, description is going to be about interpolation only. This is also to be contrasted with extrapolation, where you try to find a curve for data points outside of the given region of data. So in this uh, discussion, we'll also be talking about 2D interpolation and uh, a little bit about scattered interpolation. My main desire is to just show, walk through a few examples uh, in this screencast to show how interpolation can be accomplished with some of the tools available in SciPy, it's basically some of the main tools available. The basic mathematics of interpolation are that given a set of data points, an x parameter, and then the value of a function at that data point. The x value here can be a vector of parameters. It's a, it's a 1D vector if you're doing uh, one-dimensional, excuse me, it's just a single data point if you're doing one-dimensional uh, interpolation. Or x may be two values, x and y, if you're doing two-dimensional interpolation. Or in fact, if you're doing n-dimensional interpolation, x can be an n-dimensional, or excuse me, can contain n uh, values. In general, though, the interpolation problem is to find some curve phi uh, that interpolates between the data points such that the interpolated curve goes through the data points. If you're curve fitting, which is very often a needed uh, result, when you have data that's noisy or from a real s experiment, you often have to smooth that data, uh, in which case the second line phi won't necessarily be uh, the uh, Dirac delta function at the intermediate points. So basically, I want to run through a few examples that show interpolation in action. The first example is just a simple, basic 1D interpolation. Here I'm going to use the scipy function interpolate, and the code I'm going to run is in this screen called example 1. Uh, it, you can see that I'm importing functions from several places. This is a Python script, and I'm importing from NumPy and renaming NumPy as NP. Uh, and we see, we see we use the exponential function, we use this uh, fancy r underscore uh, method, which is similar to linspace. And then we, from the scipy uh, package, we interpolate the interpolate function, or the interpolate sub package, and from there grab the interp1d uh, class, which returns us an object that can be used to interpolate to new data points. So here I'm, I'm generating a evenly spaced data between 0 and 10, 11 data points between 0 and 10, and then evaluating this function, this simple uh, exponential function on, that, on those data. And then I construct an interpolating function. I give it the data points, x and y. So if I run this function, you'll see, you'll see what, what shows up, and then we'll talk a little bit more about what it's doing. If I run this function, I get this plot in figure 1. This plot contains several data points. The red circles are the original data, underlying data. And I can see what those under underlying original data were by typing x, y at the command line. So there, x is simply the integer, 0 to 10, and y is the function value at those points. Now I want to interpolate those data at a new set of points. This x new is a set of variables from 0 to 10 but now sampled more finely, so I get more. I, I want to get more function values at those points. Interp1D uh, is a class to construct a function that I can then call to evaluate at an interpolated curve. In this case, the default arguments to Interp1D, I'm giving it no default. Arg I'm giving it no argument as to what kind of interpolator, so it defaults to a linear interpolation. And you can see from the graph, as I'm plotting uh, x new and the function evaluated at x nu, this interpolated function evaluated at x nu, I'm getting this linear curve joining those. Now interp1d actually takes several functions, takes several other arguments. If I look, uh, use, uh, using IPython's wonderful question mark, I can look inside of interpolate and um, see all the functions available in the interpolate package. But if I look inside interp1d, I can see that it takes a kind function. This is right here. You can see this highlighted mouse. Kind equals linear is the default. Other kinds available are nearest, zero, s linear, quadratic, cubic, and so on. To see the effect of those extra arguments, let's look at another example, example two. 
You can see here that I'm just doing exactly the same thing, slightly different function. I'm using the sine function this time. But I'm going to, instead of evaluating interp1d and creating only one interpolating function, I'm going to create a new interpolating function each time through this loop and use the different kind strings that interp1d allows, nearest, zero, s-linear, or using spline linear. S-linear and linear really should give exactly the same result. Uh, quadratic and cubic, a quadratic spline and a cubic spline interpolator. And then evaluate the function at the new data points, the uh, 100 samples between 0 and 10, and then plot those, uh, applying a label to each one so that when I plot the legend, I get a legend that appropriately indicates which marker is which. So as I run example 2, we'll see the figure change, and we can see here multiple interpolating functions that interpolate the sine function between the data points uh, given in this example. And you can see the differences between nearest neighbor interpolation, uh, zero interpolation, which is zero order hold interpolation basically, uh, S linear and linear, which are right on top of each other as they should be, a quadratic interpolator and then a cubic interpolator. And quadratic and cubic look very close to the same. If we zoom in on these, at these between these two points, you can see differences between those. But nonetheless, they're very similar. Cubic interpolation is very common. Quite often, that's what people choose when doing 1D interpolation with interp1D. So that explains interp1D.